we went to that and we went backstage and we did the whole meet and greet stuff. And I was with my dad and during the concert, she talked about my father. I mean, it, so it wasn't, I knew, and, and the way I'd gotten the interview was because I knew her when I was seven years old. So like she, yeah, like she sent us, I think when I got married, she sent us maybe a blanket or something. I mean, she was always so incredibly lovely and generous and um, she's everything you think that she is and, and more. Is there someone on the top of your list that you would just love to interview? Like, you could yeah, choose. I mean, for years I've said Shonda Rhimes just because I, I think the the writing that she does is so spectacular. And I, I love women who work and women who succeed and women who are willing to have the conversation about what it takes to succeed. Um, who else would I like to talk to now? I, I, I'm, I'm getting my list together because obviously with a podcast, I keep interviewing people. So I've got this like very long running list, but at 52 years old, it's very hard for me to remember anything without actually looking at the list. Like the brain cells have just diminished. Did you, uh, trust me, I get it. Did you watch Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Do you still watch Grey's Anatomy? Because I do. So Grey's Anatomy is a household staple, mostly for my husband and my daughter. They've watched it together since its inception. And yeah, so I watch it like with them on the side usually, but they've been like the diehard Grey's people, though I know everything going on. I mean, are they okay? Are they prepared for February? They're they're not really okay. I also, Debbie Allen's another one of my favorite people. I mean, ever. And I knew her as a kid too. And because my father had produced the music for the kids from fame. So we went to the UK with, at the time, England, with the kids from fame, the whole cast. And Debbie, of course, was there. And she's always been just the warmest, loveliest. Years later, I got to interview her at Sirius XM. And every time we've connected, she took me, I got to go to the Grey set when I went to LA, like, six, seven, eight years ago, I guess it was wow. at this point. Uh-huh. And I went, Gray sat and I met, but I feel like I met Ellen Papeo. I met everybody. Like it was, an, it was a wild day. That's a good one. You mm-hmm. know, it was great. It was so much fun. It looked like a hospital. I was like, are you sure we're not at an actual hospital? Debbie Allen is great, but yes, I'm not prepared for Ellen Pompeo to leave. I like know. last night I got a text from one of my friends and it just yeah. said like, all capitals, fuck her. And I'm like, what oh, are you, no. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I guess, cause it was a third. She's like, I, this isn't okay. I just can't do this. And I'm like, sad. I, we're she's gonna allowed have to have a life. I know. And listen, I mean, can you imagine doing something for 20 years? Although you basically did. Yes, I did serious. it. It's very hard to leave. It's a very emotional thing to go to your next chapter. But because of the internet, there is this part of me that feels like I haven't, haven't really left. And Although were, I did yeah. find, hold on, I did recently like email somebody, can I have the, like, the publicist information for this guest? And like, they didn't email me back. And I was like, I wonder if they're not emailing me back because I don't work there anymore, which is so weird because like, what? Like, it's so strange. Like a publicist is a publicist is a publicist. You know what it is? I have such a, I mean, I think I've talked about it on here too. It's an before. odd thing. Yeah. I have such a, because I ran recruiting and HR, like Martha Stewart and all these yeah. companies, yeah. I have such a, I don't know if negative is the right, but I have such a pessimistic, maybe realistic view of how companies work. Yeah. And I really feel it's strange dynamics when you're not there. So maybe I'm not saying I, I guess agree I think it. it's strange dynamics. Like, cause it doesn't, It's an odd, I think I'm looking for, and feel free to help me. I really want to email. I really, Harry did it again. I really want to talk to the pioneer woman and I love her and for years and like, she's a mom and she's had weight struggles and she cooks. I don't, but I try and she's got that mercantile. Like she's just so cool. So all I wanted was the food network rep or her publicist for the book that she wrote, like, so not. I wasn't right. asking for Madonna's right. contact when, and frankly, I have ways to get to Madonna's people uh, that are outside of Sirius XM. So it was just a strange to me thing that I wouldn't get a, a reply for such a negligible ask. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, because it wasn't even, I wasn't like, hi, can you email so-and-so for me? And no, I'm like, just the name of, it's almost like the book publisher which you could find if you have. Of course, which I'll just, yeah. And I will, it's fine, I will. I just, yeah. 
Well, you did go to Hofstra Law School just like I did. Winning. Which is right. Like people are like, are you, so sometimes I get called out on this shit. People are like, are you really a lawyer? I'm like, trust me, there's nothing that I would say that that's not something to brag about. I would not, that's not my lie. Like, my Well, it is lies. fair. It's a fair point to make. My son, who's a, a 2L in law school, not at Hofstra, he makes fun of me all the time. I mean, he calls me a lawyer in quotes. He'll be like, because you're a lawyer, mom. And I'm like, but I'm like, I'm actually a lawyer. So you can't, the quotes don't apply. He's like, yeah, but. Did he ever ask you for help in law school? And you're just like, I have God, no, no idea what you're no, talking about. No, he doesn't need, no, no, no. He's so much smarter than me. Oh God, no, Jacob, he's, forget about it. He's, that's why he makes fun of me. He completely frowns upon my capabilities when it comes to my very strong legal mind. He doesn't really. I mean, he thinks I'm, it's just an ongoing joke between the two of us because he's such a better student than I ever was. And he actually wants to be a lawyer. I didn't go to law school really with the intention of becoming a lawyer. And yeah, I, I'm licensed because I went. Yeah, so ultimately why not? it makes sense to be licensed and to keep my license. You know how it is. It's like every two years or three, every two years, we have to take continuing legal education classes. You pay like $300 or something then to the bar association and you're still a lawyer. So yeah. like, that's it. But I don't, I'm not really involved. A little legal analysis here and there is as, as much as I like to do. Did you ever, so you never, did you ever practice law? For like a hot second, I did mortgage closings and I did some per diem work for other attorneys who couldn't show up to court. So I sort of combined acting and lawyering. And that was my sweet spot. Like you could show up as somebody else and stay a certain procedural something, but I didn't really want to argue the merits of any case. Huh. How did you then get into like broadcasting, like, was it through like Martha Stewart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had, I was assisting, I was my father's executive assistant for when he was working with Martha. And then I met Martha's daughter, Alexis. And then she asked me to do a radio show with her when the Sirius XM channel was launching. And that was the beginning. That was it. That was my first day on the job was my first day being on air. I mean, ever, anywhere. My heart Did you was just love it right away? Really? Uh huh. I think I was terrified, but the stakes felt really low then because 2005 in the fall, our first show was October 24th, 2005. Now I remember the date because the day before was my son's birthday and his birthday party. And I remember, I mean, I don't remember how old he was because again, the brain cells, but I just remember having this nervousness and this anticipation but I also remember the fact that Howard Stern hadn't started yet at Sirius XM. So for us, it was like, we could go turn on the radio show and broadcast and then just forget about it in a sense, because few people were listening at the beginning, or so we thought few people were listening and the ability to record the shows wasn't there the way it is now. Like now we're, wherever you are, no matter what you say, something will get captured like on demand or somebody listening can capture it. You screen grab, screen record. Back then it was like, once you're on the air and the show ends, it's done. There was no, there was no like library of what we did. So, I mean, there was like, a obviously we had for our show CDs and stuff. I mean, CDs at the time, right? Like who uses a CD anymore? But yeah, we had that. So when we first launched, it was nerve wracking. We were not a show that involved guests. So it was just the two of us. And it was really fun and um, scary, but not as scary.